Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome here. This is your host, Ma'ari Taka. We're here continuing on our Prophetic Chronicles where we discuss the lives of our Prophets, starting with Adam alayhi salam and inshallah ending with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we are continuing on our story of Yusuf alayhi salam. We got halfway, halfway through his life. We spoke about how, um, what, what, how the dream he had when he was young, how he understood the meaning of the dream in terms of that the stars were actually people. But his father warned him, don't tell your brothers about this dream. So it was understood the meaning of the dream, but the details of when or how it would happen was unknown. But his brothers found out, they made a plot, they threw him in a well, he was taken away to Egypt, sold into slavery, and eventually he was tested. He was tested with the wife of the one who purchased him, the Al-Aziz, the, 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 the rich person who purchased him, who had hoped that Yusuf would grow up to either be adopted by his, as his own son or be some, useful, be some use towards the family. But his wife became infatuated with Yusuf. She became infatuated with his beauty and she wanted to have him, have him for herself. So she closed the doors and she wanted to have her way with him, but Yusuf, being a prophet of Allah, resisted the temptation and told her, no, how can I betray the, my Aziz, the one, who, the one who, uh, who purchased me? But she persisted and Yusuf refused and ran away with such force that as she grabbed his qamis, she tore his qamis. But as it was torn from the back, when she accused him of, of um, uh, bad behavior, the Aziz realized, or his owner realized, actually she's the one who is a liar. Then she wanted to prove to the other women who are gossiping about her, saying why she's infatuated with this, with this slave boy or someone so forth. She got them around, her friends around, and she brought Yusuf and showed um, her friends Yusuf. And they were so infatuated with him and amazed by his beauty that they cut their hands. So Yusuf recognizing the ongoing fitna. This is not going to end. She's not going to stop with that one attempt or even now she's showing her friends. This is going to escalate. So he requested, he requested that he be placed into jail so he could at least be stay, kept away from this fitna. And that's where we got to in our previous story. So now we have Yusuf السلام, a prophet of Allah. He's going through so many trials in his life. Number one, his own brothers, his own siblings betrayed him. They threw him in a well. And then after that, he was taken by strangers and sold for a useless um, amount. Because, as, the, as I said, بثمني بخسن, by a, a useless amount of money. Not worthy of a Nabi. And he was sold into slavery, raised in a household, and then had, if you think about it, he was subjected to abuse from the wife of his, his, uh, his owner. So you can see here, there's trials upon trials upon trials, and now we have the next layer of trials and tribulations, where he's now placed into prison. Now, prison is not a nice place to be. You're away from, your, your freedom has been taken away from you. Already Yusuf had his freedom take, taken away from him by being sold into, into slavery, but at least he was able to move around, he was able to, 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 to eat where he wants and go out in public as he wants. But now he's in prison, he's in jail with other criminals, subhanAllah. But even in that situation, Yusuf was, was, was patient. He had patience, he had sabr. And he maintained his sabr while in jail. But there came an opportunity to Yusuf. Allah brought for him opportunity. And this is something we should always recognize in our own lives. Even if, listen carefully, even if you have been placed into trials and tribulations, there is opportunity here for you to grow. There's opportunity here for you to get closer to Allah. And, even, and as you see here with Yusuf, there's even opportunity for da'wah. So we had two individuals in jail and they had a dream. And he wanted to know, what's the meaning of this dream? One of them told Yusuf, I had a dream, and the dream was that I had bread on my head and birds were eating this bread. And the other one told Yusuf, I had another dream. And that dream was that I was squeezing the grapes to make wine. Do you know the meaning of these dreams, oh Yusuf? 
And Yusuf said, I will tell you in a short while the meaning of this, of, of this ayah, of, the, of these dreams. But before that, Yusuf took the opportunity as he now has their attention to give da'wah. He took the opportunity to call them to Allah. And he, he spoke to them about their gods and asked them various questions to help them think and contemplate about their actions, about their ways, about their beliefs. And he mentioned to them, is having many gods better than having Allah, the one God, the true God who created us all? So Yusuf gave them da'wah to Tawheed, gave them da'wah to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Lord of Ibrahim, of Ishaq and Ya'qub. Remember this, Yusuf is not just any old person. He's the son of a Nabi, who in turn is the son of a Nabi, who in turn is the son of a Nabi. SubhanAllah, look at that. What, 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 who can ask for a better lineage? Your father's a prophet, your grandfather's a prophet, and your great-grandfather is a prophet. So he's calling them to Allah and calling them to Tawheed, calling them to the oneness of Allah as all the Anbiya do. Whenever they have the opportunity, they have people's attention, they call them to that which is right. And this is one very important point as to why. Sometimes people ask me, why do you always talk about Islam? Why do you always talk about Islam? And here's a very important reason. Because we care. If you have something absolutely amazing, wouldn't you want others to have the same thing? Even in jail, even if they are criminals, you want them to have the same thing. And Yusuf didn't discriminate against anyone. So later on, Yusuf approached them and told them the meaning of their dream. I said to them, I have the meaning of a dream, and this is the meaning of it. As for the one who had bread on his head and a bird was eating the bread, then that is the one that you went, as in your end result of you being jailed, will be that, will be that you'll be executed. And as for the one who had uh, who's squeezing grapes and making wine, then you'll be freed and eventually you become the wine pourer, you could say, for, the, for a, 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 um, a, a, an influential person. I'm not sure if it was a king or who else, but it was an influential, I think it was a king, but it was an influential, influential person in that area. And as it happened, so it came to pass. But Yusuf told the one who was going to be set free, please mention me to you, your king about my situation so that I can come out of jail. So he was freed, he was given his position, but subhanAllah, Allah decreed it to be, to be, this, be the case that he forgot, he absolutely forgot about the dream or forgot to tell him about Yusuf. But as time passed, his own uh, king himself had a dream himself and his dream was that there were seven cows that were, that were skinny, were consuming seven fat cows. And he had seven, um, you could say, um, wheat stalk, uh, stalks that were old and, and, and dry, were consuming fresh green ones. What's the meaning of this? of these dreams. Seven cows, seven stalks, what's the meaning of that? Uh, and the, the wine pourer, upon hearing that this, we want to know the meaning of this, of this dream, he remembered, oh yeah, this guy here, he interpreted my dream. So he said, yeah, I know someone who can help you. So he went to Yusuf, told Yusuf the dream, and said, yes, I can tell you the, the meaning of the dream. And he told him the meaning of the dream. Which was the meaning of the dream? That there will come a famine that will last for seven years. Also, no, there will come seven years of good pastures, everything will be nice and fine, but then after that will come seven years of difficulty and famine. This is the meaning of the dream. So the, the healthy cow was the seven good years and the, the sick cow was, a year, was indicating the seven bad years. So this king, upon hearing this, said, yeah, bring this person out. He's, he's interpreted the dream. I'm happy with this interpretation. This, this sounds good. I want him to be freed from jail. We used to said, no. I don't want to be free just like that. I want my name to be cleared that I am free from any misdeeds. So even then, Yusuf wanted to make sure that it was made clear to everyone he was only in jail for a good purpose, as in to stay away from the sin. It wasn't because he committed any sin. His reputation was important to him and because he was, you could say, a representative of Al-Islam. So as he was freed, he was made in charge of the silos. Because the, the Yusuf gave a plan, he suggested a plan what you should do is in those seven good years, you should stockpile half of your, your harvest. So that when the seven bad years come, you have a stockpile of food that you can now use and avert the effects of the famine. 
So Yusuf has made himself now an Aziz. So subhanAllah, look how the affairs have changed and flipped to the opposite. He's gone from poverty, being a slave, sold into slavery by, his, by, his, by, by, by travelers, being in jail, to now being an Aziz himself. He's now an honorable a person of influence and power himself. And that was, you could say, this turn of events for Yusuf. Now he was a person of power and influence in Egypt. However, as time, as time came, eventually that famine came, and his brothers traveled from Palestine to seek um, the, some food from those silos because they became known for, those, for having provision. So as they went there and they approached Yusuf, asked, bring in their, their money to exchange for this food, Yusuf recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. So he had the opportunity now to try and get his father back. If Yusuf had said to them, oh, it's me, I'm Yusuf, I'm here. There's a possibility that he won't be able to see his father again. Maybe they'll make up a lie. Maybe they'll, they'll they, may, they may do many things. How does he get his family to come back to, or to unite with his family? So what he decided to do, he said he made the exchange. He gave them the food that they wanted, but, um, as he told those people who were loading up their bags with food to secretly put back into the, their bags the wealth that they had brought to exchange for the food. So they went back to Yaqub. They, they told Yaqub that there's, a, there's, a, there's an amazing man, an Aziz, in Egypt. And he's, brought, he's got lots of food, there's produce there, we can find help and there's more benefit there. And look, we have, he's, he's, he's actually returned to us our money. SubhanAllah, we actually got free food. If, if you think about that, what, what was the benefit, what was the wisdom of returning that or giving them this, that, that money, their, their wealth back to them? It was to build trust. To build trust so that they can trust him to come back. Because Yusuf noticed that there was one person missing, Bin Yamin, his brother. So he noticed that, in all, that he suspected, I should say, that the reason why Bin Yamin hasn't come is because his father was unsure. He was unsure what was going to happen. So by giving them back their food, they now have, they're now murtah, they're now relaxed. They're happy that this person is an honorable person, is a righteous person, and inshallah, everything will be fine. So when they returned back to um, Egypt with Bin Yamin, then Bin Yamin, he saw Bin Yamin. Obviously, he didn't recognize him because remember, they saw Yusuf when he was young. But Yusuf obviously recognized them because obviously there's more people there to recognize. And during that encounter, he managed to speak to Binyamin privately and reveal to him, revealed himself, it's me, I'm your brother, it's Yusuf. And if you remember from the previous episode, how was Binyamin special? Because Binyamin was his actual, what's called Akhun Shaqiq. He was actually his full blood brother from the same mother and same father. Whereas the others were from, other, were, were, were from other mothers. Anyway, so Yusuf had to have a plan. He had to have another plan, another plot. How can I now convince my, them to bring my father now? Because I managed to get my brother here. I want to convince them to bring my father. But still there's the issue that who knows what will happen between this time and that time. Maybe they won't bring them to our father. Maybe they might take up some lies. It could, many things could happen. How can I convince them to bring my father? So we had the, uh, Yusuf made a plot to place within their, their, their bags, their traveling bags as they return back home, a vessel. And then to send, um, you could say police or something like that, or guards, to search the vessel for this stolen item. They didn't steal it, but it was for a stolen item. So when they were on the way home, as they're just about to make their way, make their, make their way home, they were confronted by the, the guards, the guards accused them of stealing. Obviously, they said, no, we have stolen anything. But then they searched the bags and they found this golden, uh, they found this, this vessel inside one of the bags of Binyamin. Giving Yusuf the excuse to keep Binyamin in Egypt. Think of it this way. If Yusuf has just said, no, I want to keep him here, that would have indicated that he's an oppressor, that he's an untrustworthy person. But instead, by making it as if Binyamin stole, then he's justified to keep him. It's not, it's, not being, it's not oppressive, he's doing his job. 
So therefore, when they found this, subhanAllah, the brothers made another, they made up some lie. They said, oh, he's, he, he stole just like his brother before him had stolen. So they kind of did try almost in a way distance themselves from the act for their own selfish reasons, you could say. But the point was, Yusuf was given opportunity to keep Benjamin in Egypt, therefore given a motivation to bring the family forward or to at least have some reason to force the, force the issue. So they went back and told their father what just happened. Benjamin stole, what can I say? And obviously his father, Ya'qub, or their father Ya'qub, again understood, still having trust in Allah, understood that, understood that this, is, this is, inshallah, part of the plan of Allah, and that it's not, you know, something that's the end of the time. You, know, you, can, you can hopefully get him back. So they sent him back. They sent their, their, their sons back. So go, on, go to Egypt and go and see if you can find Benjamin and see if you can find Yusuf. Indicating that Ya'qub had knowledge. Obviously he's a prophet, he's a Nabi. And, and he knew that Yusuf wasn't dead. Hence why he told his sons, go and find your brother, Yusuf. So they returned back to Egypt to go and plead and say, please, can we release our brother, um, Benjamin? Even one of them at one point said, you know, take one of us instead. Because they, they, they knew that Benjamin and Yusuf was very beloved to their father, Yaqub. And at that moment, subhanAllah, Yusuf revealed himself. When they got returned to Egypt, he revealed himself and said, Are you, they said, look, do you not recognize me? Do you not recognize that I am your brother, Yusuf? And what you had done before, and the sin that you had done. But he calmed them down and said, I'm not here to seek revenge. I'm here to seek revenge. Here is my shirt, and take it, and go and bring my father back. So they went back and returned to Palestine. And it was said, even as they returned back, the Yaqub said, I can smell the smell of Yusuf, alayhi salam. It was from his shirt. Anyway, so they... They threw that shirt onto Yaqub and his eyesight came back because he became blind apparently from, from crying so much. And that was the excuse given to bring Yaqub back to Egypt. And when they returned to Egypt, they all fell down in prostration to Yusuf. And then it was said, لَقَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا This is the interpretation of your dream. The dream of the 11 stars being his brothers, the sun and the moon being his father and his mom, all of them make a prostration. To Yusuf. This is an amazing story of Prophet Yusuf, and inshallah we'll continue the story of the Prophet. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.